everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. This is very exciting today. We have another one of our actors interviews where we get to talk with one of the new members of the cast of When Calls the Heart. This is very exciting to get to do. I am film critic Rachel Wagner and today we have Jennifer Laporte here who is now playing uh, Rachel on When Calls the Heart the niece of uh of lee uh on the show uh and uh so it's pretty fun and uh so jennifer thank you so much for coming on the podcast oh of course thank you so much for having me i'm so excited to be here yeah talk about when calls the heart i know <laughs> it's a, your first time in hope valley it's very fun it is yeah yeah so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you became an actress? What inspired you to get into the field of acting? Yeah. Um, so while I live in Canada now, um, I actually grew up in Texas. Um, mm. And when I was very little, I started doing dance and that kind of led to musical theater and theater and just I feel very lucky because from a very young age, I just, I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really lucked out in that way. And uh, I grew up in Texas doing theater and musical theater, and then um, started doing film kind of when I was in high school. And I really discovered how much I loved that medium um, so much. And mm -hmm. I, I, don't have a preference between um, film and theater, but they're both very different mediums. Um, but I uh, graduated high school and I went to New York for theater school, which was just an amazing, amazing experience um, to live in New York for a little bit. Um, and I, took kind of a leap of faith when I graduated my program and decided to move to Canada. Um, <laughs> and I'm luckily a dual citizen. So um, I have been now living in Vancouver for a little over four years and mm. just been loving it. Um, and there's such a wonderful film community here. Um, and it is just such a beautiful city. I don't know if you've spent any time in Vancouver, or Canada? I never have gotten to, but really? my sister-in-law is from Vancouver. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I I feel like I feel like I have, even though I haven't. Sure, <laughs> I get that. Yeah. yeah. Well, but and I've I've talked to so many people on this I'm show sure. too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have all the Canadians, so yeah. <laughs> One of these days, I need to go because it sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. When the world isn't ending, yeah. you know. Take a set visit, come to Hope yeah. Valley. <laughs> hey, I I'm about to get my second uh, vaccine, so hey, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. You're gonna yeah. be way ahead of all of us up here, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how uh, how come you were dual citizens? You're one of your parents Canadian, or yeah, yeah. My dad was Canadian, so I really mm -hmm. just lucked out by birth, um, and I just feel so lucky because. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, it's just so interesting to live in a, a different country and to, um, mm -hmm. to see what the culture is like. And it's not that different, but, um, but it, it, it was certainly different, different moving from New York to uh, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was definitely like a culture shock there. Yeah. But, um, Those are some pretty big moves from Texas to New York. New York to yeah. Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I've always been the kind of person that just like I follow my gut and you know, mm -hmm. I, I want to go where opportunity is and I want to feel like, you know, I like I'm free to to go wherever I need to go. And um I we're so lucky with like social media and FaceTime and things like that, where, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I've left any friends behind. Like, I feel like I can have friends in, in all corners of the world. And, yeah. And that, the, the, that, oh, is a bless, that is a blessing. Plus it's easier yeah. to make new friends because you have ways to connect online and things. Definitely. And ways mm -hmm. to, to connect with, um, 
you know, like fans of projects and like the Hardys who have been so welcoming. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's really amazing. And it's like, it's just a different way of like including people in a project Mm -hmm. and like really having them, um, just really building up a fan base for something, which is, uh, just so beautiful. And I think like, yeah, when calls the heart clearly has such a, mm-hmm. such a huge loyal fan base and that's yeah. really cool to see. So you said you did shows, uh, growing up. Mm-hmm. Do you have any favorites? <laughs> to be in? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got to do Peter Pan, the musical mm-hmm. when I was, Oh gosh, I want to say maybe I was like 14 or something Mm -hmm. like that. And um, just the memory of getting to fly around (laughs) on stage Mm -hmm. is is something I'll never forget. Um, And that's a show that really sticks with me um, as far as musicals. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty magical because I just, I love Disney um, as well. And so (laughs) it was a really magical experience. I'm flying. Yes, you know it. (laughs) Of course I know it. Yes. Yeah. I, I did theater in high school. I was just in the chorus, but I, I was such a fun experience. I I would love one of these days to, to do uh, a a show again, just for the fun of it, you know, to have a small part. It's such a fun experience to 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 collaborate with uh with everybody and work so hard and then have it all come together and, and yes it's yes. it's great we did uh the whiz and bye bye birdie oh and, those are great yeah. i love the whiz yeah it was That's so classic. fun and it, it that one's really nice for high school because it has a lot of solos and Definitely. and a lot of chorus scenes it has both definitely uh, so i always think that everyone should like have that experience yeah. growing up of it at least doing one one show um, i think so it just it, yeah it's so as you said it's just it's such a beautiful experience of like this group of people working together towards this common goal and then just the feeling of like accomplishing <laughs> something mm-hmm. so massive and like yeah. putting this thing together and then having people watch it is um it's a, it's a pretty great feeling. Yeah. And having that live crowd. And I mean, that's one thing I missed so much this year is the live theater. Cause it's such a, something I love so much live theater and concerts and, and stuff. And so I'm going to try, they're actually one of the local, uh, local theaters is doing Les Mis. And so I'm definitely going to go see it in April. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm so ready. And that's like my favorite musical is Les Mis. I absolutely love it. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's a, uh, n- there's never a dry eye. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <That one. laughs> it's very upsetting and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, when I was in high school, it, I was kind of obsessed with it. I mean, I knew every mm-hmm. line to every song and, and I, I went and saw it in high school and uh, went to Broadway and I we got the choice. We could either, we could either see cats or Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. that was a pretty easy choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will say I did, I did a production of cats. Um, oh, really? I was in, I was in high school, but we did it. It was with an outside like children's company and we performed it at this like beautiful outdoor theater. And like, I'll say that it's a strange show to watch, but it's a really fun show to be in. Yeah. Because you're just, imagine that. you're just a cat. <laughs> yeah. Very bizarre <laughs> and very fun. <laughs> well, and I think so. The songs are pretty catchy. I don't mind cats. Yeah. It's just Les it Mis really or cats. Yeah. I'm yeah. picking Les Mis. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. That's, that's really cool. I, <laughs> I love musical theater. And so yeah, we have, we have our dream of someday having a Hallmark musical. It's, wow. it's our, we're yeah, trying to, we're trying to put that out into the ethos as much as possible because when they actually yeah. do, then we can have credit. <laughs> we take credit yes. for it. <laughs> well, there are, there are so many songbirds, like oh, so many. when calls the heart alone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so, 
I mean, not surprising to me, yeah. but to just sort of like walk by on set and just, you know, someone has a guitar and people yeah. are singing and I'm like, wow, it seems like everyone here has an amazing voice. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially last year when you had all these Broadway singers in the, in the uh, movies, yes, uh, the Christmas Aaron movies. Tebbit and Laura yes. Osnes and people like that, that, I mean, it, it's, it just seems to make sense. If you had a mm -hmm. countdown to Christmas musical, it would get the biggest ratings that you can imagine. I think you're on to something. Yeah. <laughs> and it just goes so well with Christmas. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's musical. Absolutely. So that, that's the dream. But <laughs> that's <laughs> but a good one. It's definitely possible. I, I learned from uh, Instagram that you are friends with our very good friend, Elise Murray, who's been on yes. the show a number of times. Yes, I know. You know her very well. Yes. That's so fun. How do you, how do you know her? Yeah, we go way back. Um, we met in theater school in New York and I was just, I was blown away by her writing then. Um, and she was, she was studying, to be a director writer. Um, and I got to do some play readings of hers and she's just such a kind, supportive, mm -hmm. like wonderful, wonderful person. And she's just carved out such a wonderful niche for herself. And um, I'm just always, we're always supporting each other from afar. Cause I believe she's in London right now. So <laughs> yeah, she's so lovely and yes. such a good writer. And I didn't even know that she went to theater school. So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She went yeah. to NYU. Um, so she is, she's just awesome. She's always yeah. been such an inspiration to me. She's so, so authentic and so lovely. Yeah. yeah. We just want to take a break from the show just to have a little check-in before we go on in the show. So we actually want to talk about our sponsor for this week, um, BetterHelp. Uh, in 2021, it's definitely okay to talk about your mental health, about your happiness. Humans aren't meant to keep everything inside. It can make us sick and therapy helps. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now. Maybe you need some tools to help. Maybe you've got stress, insecurity, problems in your relationship, um, are not not dealing well with things going on in your life. And that's what therapy can be. And whatever you need, don't be ashamed because normal humans struggle and they start to feel better and that's okay. It's good to start to feel better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers you video, phone, or a live chat session with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. The good thing is BetterHelp is much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. See if it's for you because you are your greatest asset. So this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Hallmarkies podcasts. And listeners can get 10% off of their first month of better at betterhelp.com slash Hallmarkies. That's better, H E L P dot com slash Hallmark Keys. You were in the Freaky Friday movie for yes. Disney Channel. That must have been pretty surreal. It was. It was. It, mm -hmm. It's um, funnily enough, as we we're like talking about musical theater, um, it, it was a, a movie musical. And I never would have thought that I would, um, I would do a movie musical. Um, it's, it's, that's the fun part of my job is that I never kind of know what's ahead. And there's just a lot of amazing surprises mm -hmm. <laughs> in store, I feel. And it felt, it felt really serendipitous to, um, to get to audition and then get to be in Freaky Friday because it was, it was this movie musical. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. It feels, it's like putting on a musical, but now we're just doing it you know yeah in well, the medium of film <laughs> that one was more theatrical than yeah. the typical decom uh, yeah like, yeah like the descendants or something like that which is i like those but yeah. this one was more of 
it had really felt like a play yes I it the the plot was and I'm very biased because <laughs> I was in it but <laughs> the plot was just it was so sweet and and so nuanced um uh-huh. and it was really about this mother-daughter relationship and so the the script itself was like really really important and the music mm-hmm. around it was was just like heightened moments mm-hmm. you know uh, of the story and yeah there's definitely some strange s- strange parts about it like sure the, the- <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely interesting. I think people should check it out. But the uh, parents lie. That's probably the, the oh uh, man oddest moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it is a uh, that that song always makes me um, tear up a little bit because it is mm-hmm. uh, it's it's sad and um, yeah. and and very strange too. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. cool. Yeah, uh, so then you were in. Uh, the art of us yes yes so right. how did that happen how did you end up working with Hallmark yeah that was it was one of my first jobs in Vancouver so I am eternally grateful to Hallmark <laughs> always <laughs> but I I do remember that audition um, process and it was like Vancouver still felt like such a new city to me and funnily enough I remember my parents were visiting me at the time um and they uh they ended up driving me to this audition um which was really funny it felt sort of like oh am I in high school again or so like am I in you know like middle school Mm -hmm. like I have my mom like driving me to an audition (laughs) um but uh yeah it was just that was a really sweet one um it it I played this um flower shop girl who really ardently believed in the power of love and um all my oh, scenes yeah. with um the actor Steve Lund who was mm-hmm. the lead in that who's a Hallmark regular of course mm-hmm. um and he was great and it was yeah just one day of shooting for me in this like really lovely flower shop that was just set up mm-hmm. for me and it was it was so sweet it was awesome that's cool that's good. Yeah. Uh, so what is your favorite part of acting and playing a role? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, I think, I think what I love about being an actor is, is like stepping into a new community with every new project. Um, because the, the world of film it doesn't happen in a vacuum, you know, it's like, it's a team of people collaborating on something. And I just, I love getting to meet new people, um, especially artistic people who are, you know, also musical theater nerds or who, um, who are singers or people who grew up doing this. Um, And whenever, I mean, I don't think it'll, it'll ever get old for me. Um, but whenever I get to start a new project, I, I always get like first day of school jitters, um, because it's just like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. A a new group of people. (laughs) I I just get so excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that would be the best part is that sort of collaborative kind of part of it. Like we were talking about, even with the theater is Yeah. yeah. Creating something. Yeah. It's just, it's like, it's this, it's a huge task to put together a movie or a TV show. And when you get to be a small piece of that, um, in a, in a well-oiled machine, like it just, it's just really Mm -hmm. gratifying. Um, it feels like you're all working together. Yeah. I can even relate to that with the podcast because we all, Mm -hmm. you know, work together to formulate the ideas and, and mm-hmm. there's just so many pieces that come into play with editing and uh, preparation and interviews and all those kind of things. So when it all kind of comes together, there's definitely that that feeling. So I, I can I think uh, that that's when things become very satisfying. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not as much fun, you know, by yourself, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> luckily it's like a super collaborative medium. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
That's cool. So you're in a couple of these VC Andrews movies. Are you in the new one coming up or not? I one am. Oh, yes, okay. I am. Yeah. On Lifetime. Yes. Yes. Those are, those are so much fun as well. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> in a very different way to when calls the heart, <laughs> um, <laughs> they are, yeah, they've just been a, a blast. And I was lucky enough to get to work on the heaven series, um, which came out, oh gosh, was it 2019 or 2020? Um, uh-huh. and that one was, oh, it was just so much fun. I was in kind of the last one of the series because it was this, um, well, like all the, all VC Andrews books there, you know, it's sort of like a family tree and you're sort of exploring the family tree throughout, um, you know, different time periods. And, um, the one, uh, the first one that I did, I was playing a character in the fifties, which was really cool to get to, um, be in a different time period and, um, explore that character. And is it, is there like a magical realism about them or a fantasy about them at all? Or, you know, I would say maybe like, maybe a, a sort of a Gothic, uh, aspect to them. That's really fun. Okay. Um, yeah, like they certainly, they certainly are kind of like fantastical and, and Gothic and, and dark in a, in fun, satisfying ways. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I would Mm. describe them, but, um, yes, I, the Ruby series is one that starts actually today. Um, Mm -hmm. and, it's it's yeah mary lou henner is in our our friend mary lou henner's in the one tonight yeah yeah that's amazing i can't wait to to watch them because Uh um i'm also kind of in the the last one of this series so it's like getting to watch my friends Mm -hmm. (laughs) work and until the last one um because i've never seen any of them but i because uh mary lou is in this one i i uh, dvr'd it and oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to watch the next couple. So hopefully it'll be, uh, <laughs> I, oh, I'm very curious to see what yeah. they'll be like. Yeah, they, um, yes, it's it's definitely a little different from the Hallmark, but sure. still there's like, there's there's some love triangles and there's drama and there's, there's lots of fun stuff in there. Uh-huh. Um, it's very fun as an actor <laughs> to work with those because it's, uh, for us every day on set was like, oh, there were these, you know, huge like party scenes and now you're in a hospital with your brother and this and that. And it was so much fun. Does it have a little, like maybe a once upon a time theme feeling a little bit, you know, cause it looks like from the posters and stuff that there's a little bit of a kind of a little fantasy element sure like sure there's um there's definitely with this one there's like a family curse if you will okay so so perhaps that's like that's very once upon a time for sure Mm. um and these are set in louisiana so there's lots of like bayou and yeah a voodoo priestess and some Mm -hmm. fun stuff like that (laughs) cool that sounds really fun yeah yeah uh so you play Rachel on When Calls the Heart. It's a new character. Mm-hmm. And uh, how did you uh, end up getting the role of, of Rachel? Oh, yeah. You know, I remember this so distinctly because um, I remember I got the audition um, and my schedule was so, it was so crazy. I was, um, it was the day before I was meant to, be on set for a film baby of my own um, Mm -hmm. that uh, this was in the summertime and um, we had been pushed because of COVID. And so finally I was going to be able to, to make my film passion project. And then I, I got this audition and that day I realized like, okay, I have to, I have to tape this at 10 o'clock at night because I, I don't have any time and I I have to do it. But um, so I ended up taping my audition at 10 o'clock at night. And um, I, I just remember feeling like because uh, my brain space was so taken up with um, 
everything else I had to do, I felt like I could really let it go and really um, relax into it. And then sure enough, I, I ended up getting that, which I find, I just find really funny that sometimes it's the things that you, you know, if you're able to let go of it a little bit more and like not, not overthink something, like sometimes those are the things that really, really work out. And, um, yeah, that was, that was my experience. Um, it, it, I sent in an audition tape and then I, I don't know what the turnaround was, but I was told not too long after that, that, um, I had gotten it and I was just so excited. (laughs) Yeah. That must be a very kind of surreal moment, especially filming, Mm -hmm. filming everything and like not going, not going into a traditional audition, but you know, just the whole thing must be crazy. Yeah. It does feel a little, um, I feel kind of used to it by now, but, um, but it is strange to kind of, you just sort of like tape yourself and then you, you send it out and you're like, uh, okay, I mean, I'll hear back or I won't. And are they even watching my tape? I have no idea. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a funny thing because you're not in the room, like face to face with anyone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now you aren't a teenager currently. (laughs) No, I'm not a teenager. Spoiler alert. (laughs) So what is that like for you to kind of play this teenager that's not only a teenager, but also has been kind of held back and a little bit yeah. repressed by her mother like how is that uh, yeah like for you yeah it's so yeah Rachel is such an interesting character because she as you said she she has been like really held back in a, and protected in a lot of ways by her her parents and her mother um but there was a lot that I could relate to in that and there was a lot of um I guess, empathy or my, my own experiences that I could, um, relate to with her. And, and it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel too far off to me, you know? So it was like, Mm -hmm. oh, this is, it's, it's kind of like a young woman who the way I kind of looked at her is like, she's, it's, it's like, she's ready to sort of go off to college or, you know, it's like mom is, mom is ready to like drop her off to, to college, but she's, she's kind of wary of letting her daughter go. So, um, Mm -hmm. it's fun to play that, to play a young woman who is, who's discovering herself and who's like trying to spread her wings. Well, it must be fun working with, uh, Kavan Pascal. Oh yeah. They're just, they are so, so, so sweet. And Mm -hmm. everyone on set was so welcoming, um, because it was, you know, this show has been going for so many seasons. And um, in our film world, it it really is rare for a show to to last that long, but it, it really is a testament to the Hardys and to the people who love and uplift the show. And um, And it was interesting knowing like, oh, I'm this new person coming into... <laughs> this set and what is it going to be like and it could not have been more welcoming and more warm um and yes Kevin and Pascal are they're so sweet and they're I mean their friendship in real life just is really apparent on screen and they're just they're so fun and lovely to work with yeah Mm -hmm. yeah what 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 do you think of getting to try freedom alls Yes, the Freedom Malls. I know. Aren't they funny? <laughs> the big bloomers. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> she uh, she definitely, Rachel gave her mom a, a bit of a heart attack there. But, <laughs> you know, I think um, it's fun to see how, uh, how much um, Rachel really admires Rosemary and like Rosemary really wants to take her under her wings and um, you know, encourage her to be her own woman, um, much to her, her mother's, you know, her mother being kind of wary of that. (laughs) Yeah. So when you got cast, did you kind of binge it, binge watch and kind of get up on this, on the show or you just kind of dive in? 
I had been, um, I had definitely been aware of the show because there's just many, many actors in town who um, have been on it here and there. And mm -hmm. so I was, I was aware of kind of the, the overarching like plot lines. Um, but I did do a bit of research to, to just watch as much as I could. But uh, also what was wonderful was that um, my character, Rachel is really coming in with new eyes too. So it was, she's coming in not knowing anyone and forming her own um, her own opinions of people. And so that was really fun too, to, um, to not have to necessarily know everything, but be able to kind of learn through this character's eyes. Mm -hmm. if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. And they make it fresh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. So what was it like shooting in COVID uh, mm. with, with all of the new uh, requirements and everything? Yeah. I, it was definitely such a safe set, um, I, which I'm so grateful for. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, they took safety so seriously and all of the actors, we were all tested, um, like twice a week, I think for COVID the cast and crew, um, mm -hmm. on set, which, which is just amazing. And, you know, thankfully no one, no one got sick. Everyone stayed very healthy. Um, it was. Did you have to get the uh, the way up your nose? <laughs> yeah, what? I was worried about that the very first time, but uh, luckily our um, our our COVID officer on set was very very gentle, and so no, luckily it wasn't. Oh, that's um, good. No lobotomies here. Because <laughs> I've been tested a total of four times uh -huh. uh, over the, over this this whole process, and yeah, they don't clear out your sinuses. That oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. No, I've had since then. I think I got really spoiled from being on When Calls the Heart because uh, yes, I would. I, I went to another set where that was definitely not the case, and I my eyes were watering, and it was a <laughs> mm -hmm. it was a very uncomfortable experience, but. You have yeah. to do what you have to do, yeah. you know. That's right. Uh, but uh, they had the, uh, these, I know they have these less group scenes and this and uh, some of the other stuff that they have to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely think that they, um, that was very purposeful, of course, mm -hmm. for safety. Um, and so it was just, it was just navigating that. And, um, and you and have the one, shields and other stuff that you have to wear. Yeah, it would, it was really funny because we would all have our little masks and shields on. And, um, when we were blocking scenes, we would have that on, but you know, as soon as they would call rolling, it would be this like shuffle of everyone taking off masks and like hiding them under chairs or hiding them in socks. Um, so it was, it was very funny to see, um, <laughs> this kind of like rolling. Oh, okay. And everyone's taking off their masks and <laughs> yeah. You don't want an accidental mask in, in one of the scenes. No, that's <laughs> that not, it's not very period specific <laughs> Yeah, Just mask in Hope Valley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think is the reason why uh, When Calls the Heart has such a legacy and such a fan base? What do you mm. think? Why do you think it's caught on as mm. well as it has? I mean, I think, I think that the lead cast of characters are they're just, they're so wonderful. And like Erin is so, she's so watchable and she's so engaging on screen. Mm -hmm. And she's also such a lovely person in real life. Um, and I think, I think people love period pieces. I mean, I know I certainly do. It's, it's a great form of escapism to, <laughs> to think about being in a different time period. And, um, and again, yeah, I, th I just think, I just think the the lead actors bring have brought so much to these characters that people relate to, and um, it's it's so sweet to to see the Hardys like have their teams and um, mm -hmm. root for different characters and and root for the couples in Hope Valley mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I just I it's it's sweet to see just the longevity of it, and I think. 
I, I think it's going to go for even longer. You know, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. <laughs> Are you on a team, a, a team Lu- Lucas or team Nathan? Oh, this is the question of the show, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the question. It's very controversial. Um, uh, you know, it is. I see why. I see why Elizabeth is torn between them because you know Nathan is he's he's somewhat familiar to her, um, and um, Lucas and Elizabeth have so much in common. Um, I would say, okay, if I share my team, will you, will you Mm -hmm. share your team? Yes. Okay, great. Great. I I don't (laughs) want to be polarizing. (laughs) I would say, I would say team Lucas, just because I do think, I do think that Elizabeth and Lucas have so much in common. And I think that that's the, um, I think that's the foundation of a really great relationship and it's something new for her too. Um, that's what I say. I say no. Team Lucas as well because okay. I, I mean I love both of the actors. Yeah. I love oh, they're so Kelly. great. I love Kevin McGarry. They're so nice. They're so nice. But yes. <laughs> as far as characters, I just feel like she's already done the dependable Mountie. Like yes, different. Yes, I, I think it yeah. would make the show so much more interesting. And I, I, I feel like the it's more sort of makes more sense to go with Nathan. But I, mm-hmm. I just, I just don't think it's a very interesting choice for the mm-hmm. show or for her character. It would mm-hmm. be make for more interesting episodes if she was with Lucas, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you, yeah. but I love, I think both of the actors are just, they're both like wonderful, wonderful people. So yeah. <laughs> yeah they were both great interviews it was really fun so mm-hmm. i i'm uh, i i will be a fan of either of them uh if the, whoever gets the promotion i'll be happy <laughs> yes but, promotion i love it <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know i just like i said i feel like we've already done the mountie once let's do something yeah different yeah i i'm right there with you yep <laughs> plus like i feel like lucas has been way more uh passionate about his feelings i know that's Mm -hmm. more interesting to me as far as i mean i just feel like nathan he's been they haven't even gone on a date or done anything Mm -hmm. he has a hard time sharing his feelings yeah Yeah. and sometimes you can't you can't wait for that (laughs) no and uh, i mean lucas built her the whole library for goodness sake it's very true it's a very beauty and the beast moment yeah yeah, that's right (laughs) uh well very good well we like to end our interviews with some fun questions so i love it have some fun silly questions for you okay first question what is the best ice cream flavor Ooh, um it would have to be vegan because i can't i can't do dairy unfortunately um but we have, we have an ice cream place here called Ernest Ice Cream. And they just have, oh, they have the best like vegan flavors, like um, like chocolate hazelnut, essentially oh. like Nutella, like vegan. Oh, so good. That sounds good. You yeah. could have sorbet. Or- I could have sorbet, but sometimes you want the, you want the like creamy. chocolate or the creamy, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That sounds good. Uh, what is your favorite color? Oh, purple. Yeah. Oh, mine too. Oh, it's just such a, <laughs> it's such a great color. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. What music are you into right now? Um, oof, so much, but today it's kind of a gray and rainy day in Vancouver. And so, uh-huh. um, all morning I've been listening to kind of folksy indie Mm. you know slow jams so that's that's where I am today (laughs) that sounds good isn't that like a normal day in Vancouver though I know it is kind of a normal (laughs) day but we are getting into springtime so Uh it gets sunnier and the days get longer it's very exciting (laughs) good okay uh what is your go-to date night food and we've been we've been changing this question around to what would you get uh from your postmates or doordash or kind of i love it yeah (laughs) no date nights here yeah (laughs) um oh i have been really craving um we have an ethiopian restaurant in town and they Uh, have like 
this, oh my gosh, I'm salivating thinking about it. <laughs> but it's like a, a vegetarian platter essentially. Oh. And um, I'm forgetting the name of the bread that you like eat it with, oh. but it is, oh, it's just, it's so nourishing and it's so tasty. <laughs> mm, so really- there's, there's a Mediterranean restaurant here that, that has a similar sounding uh, dish, but mm-hmm. this, oh, I, I don't even know what this, the, it's not hummus. Uh-huh. It's kind of hu- hummus adjacent uh-huh. and oh, it's so good. It's this yeah. sauce. I, I like, also I, love Mediterranean food. I mean, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. Mm, so delicious. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what would be your go-to date night activity back when we, when we could go outside and leave? Oh, our- yeah. Um, I feel like going to a museum or going mm-hmm. to some kind of like, I just can't wait for live performances yes. as we we're talking about like please just I want to go see music yeah. I want to go see a play or a musical mm-hmm. um I can't wait for that yeah it's coming soon <laughs> me too yeah me too all right uh, dogs or cats oh I love them both but I did have a childhood cat who was an angel and she lived to be 20 years old. So (laughs) I know, I know she was a hearty little thing. So, um, in her honor, I'll say cats, I guess. (laughs) Good beaches or mountains. Beaches. (laughs) Me too. Probably sacrilegious of me to say that in Vancouver, but (laughs) beaches. Yes. Okay. Would you rather be in a fancy dress or sweats? (laughs) Oh, just because of covid like i I can't wait to put on yeah something fancy you know can't i'm the same that. yeah because yeah. at least if you're wearing a fancy dress you're going somewhere you're leaving the house yeah like that's yeah it. it's been a year of sweats so i'm okay i'm okay i can't wait to put on something yeah. nice and <laughs> go out there- there's an old Ray Romano bit that he does where he talks about that he doesn't need to be funny because the night is already a success because <laughs> we've all left the house. And I'm like, never will that be more true than 2021. <laughs> yep. yep. All, we all get to leave the house. Oh yeah. Can't wait for that. <laughs> I love my house, but I mean, come yeah, on. <laughs> I've really, I've really gotten to know my apartment. And so we need a break. <laughs> yeah. All right. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Halloween. Yeah. Um, because of the dress up. Yeah. You know, what are your, some of your big hits, your, your favorite costumes? that you? Ooh, have? I'll do, I've done all the star Wars stuff. I've oh. done Ray. Um, I did Han Solo. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what are some other good ones? I'm trying to think, but I, I know this year I'm, um, I mean, fingers crossed if we can do things, yeah. uh, I really want to do, um, some labyrinth characters, oh, you know, yeah. if you're familiar, I love yeah. that. I love eighties movies. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I last costume I had, I think I was an angel. I think was that's a good one. one. Yeah. yeah but I've been, I've been Dorothy. That was fun. Dorothy's good. Yeah. McGonagall from Harry Potter. That was fun. <laughs> One year I was um, Chucky from the Rugrats. That was fun. <laughs> ah, that's yeah. good. I thought you were going to say the other Chucky. Yeah, no, no. Not the, <laughs> the, scary the, Chucky. Scary. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what other fun ones that mm-hmm. I've done. But uh, that that's that's my favorite part of, of Halloween is I was Tracy Turnblatt from Hairspray ah oh, yeah that was really fun got to do the wig right. and yeah that's my favorite part is kind of planning the costume and and yeah. uh, I, I used mean, to do a, the, a oh sorry no, no, no go ahead <laughs> I think it's like it's the theater kid in all of us yeah. like oh I can't wait to dress up and do something mm-hmm. yeah I agree <laughs> and so last question mm-hmm. what is your favorite hallmark or romantic movie Oh, that's so good. Um, you know, I was just thinking about um, the film A Little Romance, which is so, uh, I just love that film. It's like, it's two kids who are, it's just a very sweet, innocent love story, you know, set mm-hmm. in Italy, um, in Venice. And 
I think that one is so, so sweet. I had never heard of that movie until last summer. Mm. I was asking for recommendations for my family movie night series that I do on my channel. And Alonzo Giraldi, who's a friend of a podcast, uh, his film critic, he recommended it to me. And uh, so I so I watched it and reviewed it. It is very sweet. It's so sweet. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's like it's really hard to not to feel upset while watching it. It's yeah. just so heartwarming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. <laughs> All right, very good. You passed the test. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited to see Rachel on the show, and excited to see you and oh, what happens. And uh, so, thank you so much for coming on. This was great. It was really thank fun you to so talk much to you. for having me. I know. I, I wish we could talk for longer. I know. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can people follow you on social media? All that fun stuff. Oh, sure. Um, I'm on Instagram at Jen underscore Laporte and my Twitter, which um, has been sitting abandoned, which is a good reminder to (laughs) check up on it is uh, Jen M Laporte. Okay, great. (laughs) And uh, yeah, and you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all over social media and on itunes youtube and ron tomatoes to check that out and make sure you're all following the podcast hell murky's pod and hell murky's podcast all over social media and if you are listening on itunes please leave us your ratings and reviews we really appreciate it and if you are listening on youtube please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel we appreciate that so much and we also have our patron group and merch store which has tons of hardy's inspired merch so check that out and thanks again we'll definitely have you back on this was a lot of fun and uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll talk to you all later bye everyone bye